Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. I give you glory. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father. We glorify your name. There is none like you. Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Ancient of Days. You are great and greatly to be praised. Thank you, Father, for all that you've done, for all that you're doing, for all that you're yet to do. We say thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for salvation. Thank you, Lord, for our promises, your promises concerning us. Thank you for our children, our family. Thank you, Lord. Without you, where would we be? We glorify your name. We praise you. Take all the glory. Take all the praise. Thank you, mighty healer. Thank you, our protector. Thank you, our strong tower. We glorify you. We exalt you above all else. Great Father, compassionate God. The reason why we live, we move, and we have a being. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Good morning. My name is Toki Ademoyero. This is KICC Kingdom Harvest. We welcome you to our first live stream. And we know that you will be blessed in the name of Jesus. In the midst of all that is going on and also in obedience to what the government has directed, we are not able to meet on site. But the church marches on, the church continues. And of course, the church that we belong to is a church without walls. So we thank God for those of you who are joining, even as I'm speaking. I pray that God will bless you. God will strengthen you. And that the word that we share today will bless you. It will comfort you, especially at this kind of time where many have suffered loss. Many don't know what is going on. They don't know what the future holds. And we know that we serve a mighty God because we know that God. And we pray that everybody here today and their family, their loved ones, and those who are here to join us, that you will leave this session blessed, encouraged, empowered, lifted, and you are able to go on and share that same message and that same blessing with many others in the name of Jesus. We must all remain godly, spiritual, of course, and sensible at this time and we receive the grace and the wisdom to do so in the name of Jesus. I welcome those of you as you are coming in and seeing as many more are joining. I'll just wait a few minutes before we go into the word. We welcome you in the name of Jesus. We welcome you by the power in the name of Jesus. You are not here for nothing. You have come to be blessed and you will be blessed in the name of Jesus. I want you to be expectant. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to know that God is with us. We don't know all the answers. We don't have all the answers, but the source that we depend on has all the answers because our God is omniscient. Our God is omnipotent. So once more, I welcome you to KICC Kingdom Harvest. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we give you praise, we honor you, and we thank you for a time like this. A time where many are looking and calling and asking and afraid. But Father, we thank you because we know in you and through you, we have peace that passes all human understanding, garrisoning our hearts and our minds in the name of Jesus. And with this same knowledge and understanding, we pray for all the families, 
all the individuals who have lost their loved ones all over the world. And we pray, Lord, that you will comfort them, that you will strengthen them at this time in the name of Jesus. Many are asking questions that sometimes you may not even answer. But the most important thing is that we pray that you will stop this flow, this spread of this virus in the name of Jesus. And that you strengthen and comfort all these families who have lost their loved ones and they don't know what to do, how to handle it. We pray that through the message today, that somebody will find encouragement, they will find strength to pick up, to rise up and keep on moving forward. Thanking God for life and thanking God for everything that lies ahead, knowing that God is in charge. Father, we pray that through the word today, you will use my mouth to speak that which you want me to speak. And that everybody who has joined this session today, and those who are yet to join, that they will be blessed indeed in the name of Jesus. Together, we will continue to be a blessing. Together, we will continue to make your name great. Together, we will continue to be strong in you and in the power of your might. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed and declared, Amen. Praise the Lord. I know that you are saying amen by faith, so, um, but I thank God for you being here at this time. I'm going to share a word with us in the time we have. I'm hoping that we'll finish at the latest um, 12.30 p.m. for this first live stream. But the message I want to share with us today is a message that I've titled Remaining Faithful in These Times. Remaining faithful in these times. I'm going to take the text of um, what I want to talk about today from Matthew chapter 24, verses 3 to 14. Matthew chapter 24, verses 3 to 14. The word of God says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they de deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. May the Lord bless his word and the, re and the hearers of his word in the name of Jesus. Now, I want to talk about us remaining faithful in these times. This is a very good time to talk about faith. And the reason why it's a good time to talk about faith is this is a time that Satan smiles. He's happy. He can see how he's confusing people and making them afraid and making them go helter skelter. And that is why we see a lot of the things that we've seen so far in the few weeks so far of this pandemic. We've seen people go to stores and they go and ransack everything that is there, buy it, whether they need it or not, with an anticipation of a future that maybe is not even God's will for them. Fear makes people go everywhere and anywhere 
and many times not to God. Today, I bring you a word that will encourage you, that will remind you, and if you are not a born-again Christian, you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior yet, and you are on this live stream right now, I want to believe that by the time you leave, you have accepted him as your Lord and Savior, and you now know that the enemy has all this time been keeping you away from the truth that can set you free, because you will be set free in the name of Jesus. The Bible defines faith, if I go straight to a verse that I can say is a definition of faith, in Hebrews 11 verses 1 and 2, the Bible says, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things yet unseen. And in the next verse it says, For by it the elders obtained a good report. In this day and age, especially now that there is a pandemic and it's affecting everyone, whether they are born again or not, it is good for us to obtain a good report, not just a report, but a good one. The one that reminds people that we belong to God. The one that reminds people why we are confident. The one that reminds people why we want to believe that we are healthy and we will not die but live to declare the works of the Lord. The one that will make those who don't know our God the way we know him to be encouraged to come to that same God and be like us as we are in Christ Jesus. This is a good time to do that. So faith is the substance of things that we hope for, the evidence of things we haven't seen yet. It means faith helps you and I to do the things that we have thought is impossible, the things that we have figured out with our own minds and our own skills and assumed and accepted that it cannot be done. But God is able to do much more than we can think, much more than we can ask because his power works in us. The first point I'd like to pass across is that we need to be full of faith because being full of faith is a constant reality for any true Christian. This is a time for us to show that we are Christians, that we have already said we are. So people see that we are talking, we are acting in faith in order to bring others to Christ, in order to encourage others, not just because we are doing something that, if one is not careful, it can look like a cult, but because we have a relationship with God. It is true, and it's based on the truth. Secondly, the world is changing, but the world itself is not changing. God himself is not changing. In Malachi 36, God said, I change not. In Psalm 119 verse 89, we know that his word is forever settled in heaven. So there is nothing that the word of God is telling you and I today that relates to a time like this that we cannot take away and walk with in confidence and believe that it will be our own testimony too. And I want to challenge you to do that. The world is changing. There's pandemic today, tomorrow there won't be pandemic. Another day will be a recession. Another time it might be just something like Olympics coming. Another time it might just be football, something that draws people together, whoever they are. It could be anything, negative, positive, in the world. The world is changing all the time. Governments come, governments go. Politicians come, politicians go. But the word of God abides forever. And when you and I go and depend on that word, then we are depending on the ability to be unchanging. That is to hold on to the source, to hold on to God, who is the beginning and the end of everything. He's the Alpha and is the Omega. And I challenge you today to allow God, who is the author and finisher of your faith and who is the Alpha and Omega, let him take control of everything that may be affecting you right now. And you will see God at work in the name of Jesus. Thirdly, the true Christian must more frequently than, than even before, the true Christian must prove his Christianity. 
and the genuineness of his faith. How genuine is your faith? I'm at the moment speaking to those who already are Christians. And there are so many Christians. Anybody who says he's a Christian, no other Christian can go to them and say they are not. They say they are. So a true Christian, therefore, this is a good time to be strong. It's a good time to, 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 to be, to show that your faith is genuine. This is a time to prove that you are a Christian. Fourthly, we must, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, know how to remain steadfast. You know, in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, the Bible encourages you and I to be steadfast, to, to, to be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as we know that our labor in the Lord is not in vain. It is important for us to be steadfast. It is important for us. So through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we will know how to be unmovable, even though things are really affecting situation around us things are going on some of them are affecting our finance right now some of them are affecting our source of of income right now some of them we, we may not have the disease we may not have the virus but some things are already indirectly affecting homes affecting uh, people's financial lives and yet how do they how do they remain faithful in this situation how do they prove that they have a god who is the jehovah jireh who will provide for them because if they show that, then maybe the person who doesn't have the God that they have already will be able to come to that God too, through them. This is the time for us to do that, to be steadfast, to be unmovable, to abound. Number five, I would like to challenge us to examine ourselves and ensure that we remain faithful to God and his kingdom. We must do that. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5 says we should examine ourselves whether we are still in the faith. Now, it went further and said, prove your own selves. There is a need for us not to wait for others to criticize, which is easy to come, and, and, and say we are doing well, which comes sometimes. We should not wait for that. We should learn to dig deep. In the relationship that we have with God, a personal relationship that we have, we must examine ourselves. We must challenge ourselves and ensure that we remain faithful to God and to his kingdom. We must examine our lives on a daily basis, including now. From the day that the lockdown started in so many different levels all over the world, we need to examine ourselves. Have I handled myself as a true Christian? Or did I just say what everybody else is saying? Did I believe what everybody else is believing? I pray in the name of Jesus that God will grant you strength in the name of Jesus right now to handle what is already um, happening all around us so that you are able to encourage others who don't even have Jesus Christ like you do. Number six. I will want you and I to be able to answer key questions on a daily basis and as many times as you want throughout the day. Not only during this pandemic, which will come and go, it has come already and it will go in the name of Jesus, but forever. Let us ask some key questions. Is my faith made perfect by my works? The things I'm already doing, saying, the things, the plans I'm already making, the decisions I'm making, are they actually making perfect? Is the faith I have in God, is it making perfect the works that I'm doing, all those things I'm doing? Can people see the works that I'm doing? I can see, they can see faith being perfected because of the works they see me do, because I trust my God. I believe my God. So I went on and made that decision. So I went on and, and did that good work. So I went on and believed concerning that person. Those are the questions that I need to begin to answer. In James chapter 2, verse 22, the Bible says, Seest thou faith? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? And by works was faith made perfect. So make sure that everything you do with your mouth, 
with your feet, where you go, with your mind, your thoughts. When it's just you and God is looking at your heart and he knows everything that is going on in your heart. He looks on the inward parts. Make sure that you are answering that question. Is my faith made perfect by my works? Another question to ask is, am I still a minister of reconciliation? Things are getting to a level where people don't know what the government will say tomorrow or next day or the day after. But we know our God and we know God can stop this. God will stop this. God will heal. God will comfort. God will encourage. God will empower. And we know if we are Christians, we know this too shall pass. We know this spirit of death will pass over us by the power in the blood of Jesus. We know this. But the question we need to answer is, am I still ministering reconciliation to everybody else around me? Maybe they don't have Christ like I do. Maybe they don't know God like I do. Maybe they are Christians like I am, but they are not as strong as I am yet. They have not drawn from that well as they should up to this point. Then let me minister reconciliation to them. Let me let them know this is not some um, mumbo jumbo motivational talk. This is spiritual. This is real. This is what Christians do. We encourage others. We bring hope. We bring strength when there seems to be hopelessness, where there seems to be weakness. We bring it to people through the word of God. I challenge you to answer this question every day and throughout the day, especially at this time. Be a minister of reconciliation. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, from 18 to 20, and all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Verse 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. I pray that you be reconciled to God. For those who may not have Christ as their Lord and Savior, I pray that through this message today, even as I'm speaking already, that the word of God is ministering to you. And by the end of this session, especially when you get the opportunity to do so, you and I, we will make that confession together with your mouth and my mouth, and there shall be salvation for you and for me in the name of Jesus. Another point I want to pass across is when we give our lives to Christ, we are translated from darkness to light. We become citizens of God's kingdom. We become citizens of God's kingdom and we are no more of Satan. So I want you to remember that when you give your life to Christ, you don't belong to the world of darkness. You belong to the world of light. You belong to God's kingdom. You are a child of light. So it's important for you and I to ensure that we trust God in this situation and that we pass that message on to everyone else. The life that you and I live is a life that is to glorify God and to encourage others in the name of Jesus. The next thing I'd like to share with us because time goes very quickly, is what must we do at this time? Even though I've said some things that we should be doing, there's some things that we really, really need to think about that we need to be doing as Christians, especially at this time. Because we are thinking now not only about ourselves, but about everybody that we're coming to contact with, whether it's just for a minute or for an hour or for 10 years, we need to be doing some things. We need to reject the idols. That's the first thing I like to pass on. Reject the idols. Who are the idols? Money. Your work. And everything else that takes you away 
from Christ at the center of it all. There is a song that goes that says that Christ at the center of it all. And it's important for you and I to practice that on a daily basis. What must we do? Put Christ at the center of it all. Put Christ at the center of it all. John 6, 27. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. So let us labor for the things that matter. Let us labor for the things that are of the kingdom of God. Let us labor for the things that will glorify God. Let us think about how we can bring others to Christ and so that they can know what we know. They can enjoy the peace that we enjoy. They can enjoy the strength that you and I enjoy. This is important to us. This is important to God. This is important for us to continue to do. Reject the idols. Reject every distraction. Lay them all aside because it must not rule over us. It must not distract us. Secondly, be aware that the world corrupts and endangers. Praise the Lord. The world corrupts and endangers. The Bible says in Matthew 13, verse 22, he also that received seed among the thorns. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it become unfruitful. And it become unfruitful. Matthew 13, 22. Remember, the word of God is what we need. When that sower was sowing that seed, he sowed, the Bible lets us know from the parable Jesus gave us, he sowed onto four soils. The world may have looked at him and said he was 25% successful, but that wasn't God's will. That wasn't what God uh, intended for him to do. So he will never be judged by that. The will of God concerning the sower is to sow. And that is what he did. 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 He sowed the seed. He sowed the seed. So go and sow the word of God to God's people. Go and sow the word of God to, to everybody that you have contact with. Go and sow the word of God to everyone. Go and sow that word. Encourage somebody with the word. Know that the word, the word will encourage. The word does not corrupt. The word gives life. The word gives hope. The word gives encouragement. Go and sow that word of God. Go and sow that word of God. Now, the next thing we need to do is to know God through Christ. Know God through Christ. John 17, verse 25. John 17, verse 25. O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And these have known that thou hast sent thee. These have known that thou hast sent me. Now, John 3, 19 says, and this is a con condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light. They loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So this is very important, that we know God through Christ Jesus. How will others know God? It will be through us. When we mention Christ, when we give the word and we share the word, they will then come to God because we have brought Christ to them. Because we have brought Christ to them. So that is very important. Know God through Christ. That is what we need to do. Because I cannot give what I don't have. If I don't have Christ, if I don't know Christ, then I will not be able to share him with others. 
and this is very important. So go and make sure, go and make sure that you know the word. Make sure that the word in you is what you use to bless others. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The next point, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Ephesians 6, 12 is where that came from. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. If you are strong, all the unbelievers around you, they will be strong. But for you to remain strong, stay in the word. Stay in the word. What should you be saying at a time like this? Keep on saying it. If you can't remember, go to the word of God. Keep on praying. Keep on declaring. Keep on trusting God. Let the people around you, let them hear God through you. Let them hear his word through you. Let them hear hope through you. Let them see how bold, how strong, how hopeful you are at this time where the government cannot give the hope that we need. They are human beings. The, 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 the best of men are only men at best. The best of men are only men at best. They cannot do everything for you. And there's some things also that God will not do for you that you need to do for yourself. So we need to help others to get to this level, to be able to get to this level. So make sure that you live your life knowing God, being strong in the Lord so that you can be also a blessing, so that you can be a blessing. Praise the Lord. Another thing we need to do is we need to put on and conform to the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to put on and conform to the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Some people are going out there to help the elderly, to help the vulnerable, to help those who have been instructed to stay at home regardless. And they need help already. But there needs to be people who are ready to do that. And that means you and I. Find such people. Find such people and be a blessing. Find such people and be a blessing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Be not conformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is very important. Very important for you and I. Number six, I'm trying to skip many things because time goes quickly. Bear fruit of the Spirit so you are known as a Christian. Matthew 7, 16. Ye shall know them by their fruit. Ye shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? What fruit will people see in you and through you? When Christ dwells in us because we are born again and the Holy Spirit is in us and there's no expiry date, the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us forever according to the word of the Lord, it means we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Strengthens us. So we need to bear that fruit. People need to be able to see that confidence, not arrogance, not insensitivity to people's situation and their own realities, but we bring that knowledge, we bring that understanding to people. We hold their hands and take them to the next level of knowledge of God, knowledge of Christ. If we don't have it, we can't give it. So make sure you are bearing that fruit because that is how you will be known to be a follower of Christ. The word Christian itself is, is like a, an appellation that was given to the people first in, in, in Antioch, where it was first used. And it was because they saw the apostles who were reminding them of Christ. So what will people see you do that will remind them of Christ Jesus? Many are just there. It is just distractions. 
<coughs> and all the all the idols of this world that is not making them take that step to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And God wants to use just you to switch on that last switch in their life for them to encounter Christ. It is important that you and I bear the fruit. How do we show our faith and our faithfulness in these times by bearing fruit of the Spirit? We can't bear the fruit of a spirit that we don't listen to. We can't bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit if we quench the Holy Spirit. We cannot bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit if we if we if we disobey the Holy Spirit. If we if we do not hear what the Holy Spirit is saying, if we do not if we grieve the Holy Spirit, we will not be able to bear the fruit of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit owns the Spirit that He gives and that we are bearing. So I encourage you and I, let us bear the fruit of the Spirit at this time. Praise the Lord. Be wise in the things of God and of the world. Number seven. Be wise in the things of God than of the world. Many people are smart and wise concerning things of the world. They know how to get things done. They know how to set a goal concerning something they want at work concerning their finance or their investments or their destiny and the, 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 the device means through the skills that they've acquired or the education that they have uh, gathered, they, they, they use that to determine how they will achieve some things. But as Christians, we do that too, but beyond that and before all that, we actually start with the way, the will and the word of God. We make sure that that is what shapes and molds all our goals and aspirations. So we need to be wise in God's way. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 2, it says God gives wisdom and out of his mouth come knowledge and understanding. If I want to be wise in this world and I already belong to God and I know that even though I'm in the world, I'm not of the world because the kingdom I now belong to is not of this world, but an everlasting kingdom that will never perish. Then all I need to do to be wise is to be wise in his way, in God's way. So I go to the source of all wisdom. And we know that wisdom is a principal thing. Proverbs 4, 7. The Bible says God is saying, get it. And in our getting, we should get understanding. So let us be wise in this world concerning the things that are facing us, the things we're dealing with, but in God's way. Let us ask for that wisdom from God. He says in James chapter 1, he said, if, if any of us lacks wisdom, he said, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally and your bread and not, not, and it shall be given him. God will grant you that wisdom. How can we, how can we be wise at this time? Yes, I need to eat. I need to drink at this time. I need to have enough food in the house at this time. When almost everyone is on lockdown and businesses are on lockdown and the grocery stores are on lockdown. But how can I also be wise while seeking to meet all those personal goals? How can I be wise in the way God wants me to be in this situation. So I'm maximizing the opportunity and it has all not been based on me, myself and I, which we call the unholy trinity of flesh. This is a good time to proclaim the gospel. It's a good time to minister the word. It's a good time to encourage each other. Praise the Lord. So do not let down. Do not give up. Do not give in to the enemy. Do not let him distract you. And that person, that member of the family who is now on lockdown and they are now <laughs> stuck with you in your home. What have you been doing? What have you been saying? What conversation have you been having with them? I encourage you, be faithful at this time to God by conveying faith to them. Because God will bless us all. God is going to protect us all. This coronavirus pandemic, our God will stop it in the name of Jesus. And I know you know that when I'm making that declaration and you are saying amen, I know you know it is because as we are declaring that word right now, and I just said it as a servant of God, 
and you have joined up with me by saying amen in saying the same thing, it means we're encouraging somebody. It means we are, we, are, we are believing that what God has said it will come to pass. We are believing his word. We are not saying, we don't hear what the government is saying, but we're saying that the government is not our God. God is our God. Have you not realized that the government is also looking and listening to scientists? Not too long ago, a scientist said we should wait for about 60% of people had, had immunity to catch something so that it can be a solution. And that person, people can call him anything, but he, I'm sure he didn't intend to be any of whatever anybody may say he is negatively. That is how he understands it. He's also meaning to bring solution. Another person is saying, if we end up with 20,000 deaths, that we should call it a good outcome. Now, is that what you and I are going to run away with and wake up every day and use as the determinant of how hopeful we are for the next day in this period? When this is actually the best time for us as Christians to encourage the people around us and not speak that language. As church, you can see all over, especially the KCC family and almost every, every uh, Christian family all over the world, they are obeying the government. In fact, there's some countries where the leader there has not said anything. But the, the people of God in those countries are already doing what churches in UK, US are doing too. So we are not depending on man because man cannot have all the answers. A man will never have all the answers. All the answers are with God. And his word will set us free. Somebody is being made to believe that the coronavirus will not end this year. I want to announce to you, we reject it in the name of Jesus. It is not our portion in the name of Jesus. Coronavirus shall be stopped by God in the name of Jesus and that God will give strength and comfort to the families who have already lost people as a result. But I must warn you, the Bible also made us to realize that there are times where pestilences will come. The text that we read earlier talks about some signs of the end days and one of them is pestilences. And this is a pestilence. This pandemic is a pestilence. We must not think we are here to just be doing kushti kushti message and never talk about how real our God is. God also, he deals with disobedience. He deals with, with people who do not honor him. He deals with people who disregard him. This is a time for the United Kingdom that we are praying for to rise up and remember that the, even their own forefathers, they believed God, they honored God. And at a time like this, the government should also be looking onto the churches in a much more you know, determined way to show that God is the answer. Christ is the answer. He's the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible tells you and I in John 14 verse 6, He's the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come unto the Father except by me. Without Jesus Christ, nobody can reach God. And because God loves everyone, including those who have not given their life unto Christ yet, even at this time, that is why we are stepping in too. Because when I was doing what I liked and saying what I liked, and I did not even honor God, somebody kept on trusting God in Christ Jesus for my sake. And 25 years ago, I was able to call on the name Jesus and I've never, and I will never have any reason to look back. And I pray for somebody here today, that will be your portion. You will, and you've been hearing the word today. We have not asked you to go and drink a drink somewhere. We have not asked you to come and eat something specially somewhere that you have to eat. All we have brought to you is the word of God, the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and God himself. 
in Christ Jesus. Now we're saying, believe in your heart. Then you can confess with your mouth. And together, we are born again. And all this, they will still pass in the name of Jesus. This pandemic will not overwhelm you. All these things that go with it also, they will not overwhelm you in the name of Jesus. You will stand strong. You will stand mighty. You will stand victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Now, I really want to say this as we're rounding up. As we're getting to rounding up. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, everything I've said today, it will, it will sound like a secondary message to you. It was not intended to be so. I definitely do not intend for you to be the third party. Because God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, He loves you. I am just a conduit. I'm just a servant. He's using at this time. He's just using me to be able to share this message with you and encourage you. Maybe you are even here and you know that you have given your life to Christ. I can tell you, once you've given your life to Christ, you have, because you have been sealed from that moment that you gave your life to Christ, and you are sealed forever until the day of redemption. But you feel that you've examined yourself, and that examination, that self-examination took place also while this live stream was going on, and you felt you want to rededicate your life. Oh, come on. Go ahead and do so. I am here with you. Let us, we will pray that prayer together in a few minutes. But I want you to know, if you want to rededicate your life, or you don't have Christ as your Lord and Savior, when people ask you whether you're born again, whether you're a Christian, you always start by saying it's a long story. And you come up with all these answers as if it is a fight between some denomination. And when you go to the Bible, you will not find any denomination there. We don't preach denomination in KICC all over the world. We don't preach that. We just preach Christ glorified. We preach the gospel. We preach the truth. And we bring you that truth. That Christ died for you and I. For God so loved the world, John 3, 16. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life whosoever that is what the bible said not me so i can't come and add or take away from that he said whosoever i don't know what it is that is making you feel you you are disqualified from even having the audacity to say you want to accept jesus right now and you are not even in a church physically in a building no this is church right now where two or three are gathered in the name of jesus god is there in their midst He's here with us. And we're going to make a declaration together in a few minutes. And I want you to boldly make it with me, knowing that is why I'm saying this. So you know you can make that declaration. You can make that confession. And when we finish today, latest 1230, this session, you can confidently sit up, get up, depending on what you're already doing, maybe you're already standing, and you can confidently go and announce it that you are a child of God that you are a Christian. Don't worry about what anybody says to you in return if it does not lift you up. It happened when Jesus was preaching. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, everywhere he went, there were people who were against what he's saying. And, you, and you've heard it. If you didn't know it in the Bible yourself, you've heard of it. You've watched many films during Easter, during Christmas, about it. So if it happened to Jesus Christ, who I am calling my personal Lord and Savior, and my pastor calls his personal Lord and Savior, my only pastor, Pastor Matthew Ashimolo, he calls Jesus Christ his personal Lord and Savior too. If we are calling him our personal Lord and Savior, that same man who also was stoned, he was spat on, he was stabbed for you and I, his blood was shed on the cross for you and I. If he went through all that, him being perfect, then who are we to complain? So my brother, my sister, be encouraged. 
God loves you. The Bible says in 2 Peter 3 verse 9, that God is long-suffering towards you and I. That is, God is waiting. You have left it in 2020, but God is still waiting on you. He loves you so much. That is why he sent Jesus thousands of years ago. <laughs> and up to now, Jesus is still waiting for you who have not given your life to Christ. He's long-suffering towards us, not willing for any of us to perish, any. So I'm not, I'm not interested in anybody perishing, anybody. They may have some things I don't like in my flesh, but congratulations, that is my opinion. God is not interested in what I don't like about somebody. God is interested in that soul, that person's soul being saved, and that is why I'm here too. I'm here because God loves you. He's already saved your soul, but you now need to accept Jesus so that the eternal life that he has ordained through Jesus Christ, it becomes yours. You don't need to do anything else. You, you, you don't need to qualify. <laughs> it is by grace that you are saved. It is not by your own merits, not by your hard work. It is God. So I'm calling upon you today. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the door that you're looking for, for you to be able to knock on, go in, find pasture, find answers, find provision, find help, find hope, find strength. Everything that you desire, he is the answer. He is the answer you're looking for. And you need to call on his name today. You want to rededicate your life to him? Of course, you can do that also today. Know that God loves you. No Jesus, no heaven. Some people might not want to mention that. Oh, we want to be positive. We are not in the business of positivity. Positivity. We are in the business of spirituality, the spirit of God. We do these things that are in line with the spirit of God. And of course, if you want to now insist positive, then it sits within that. But it is by the Spirit of the God that leads us, that enables us, that empowers us, that we are able to confidently say that you give your life to Christ and you will have eternal life. Everything you are asking God in faith, in the name of Jesus, he will do that. So give your life unto him today. Today, the government may, without intending to have passed on fear have passed on panic because they are doing the best they could but i want you to know there is no fear god has not given us the spirit of fear but he has given us power he has given us love he has given us a sound mind these are not overnight things but do you know what when you make a declaration with me in a few minutes as i keep on saying <laughs> We will get there. I want you to believe that from that moment onwards, you are now empowered that way. You are empowered that way. Because without Jesus, we can't get to that heaven. We can't even please God. And I want you to look beyond the coronavirus pandemic. I want you to remember, the Bible tells us in Romans 10 from, from 11 to 13, that whosoever believes on the name Jesus, whosoever believes in the gospel shall be saved. Whosoever believes the word gospel means message. The word kingdom means government. Jesus Christ, before he left us in this world and is going to be with the Father to continue to be with us, before he left, he did say, you know, that we will not be ashamed when we believe on his name. He said we will not be ashamed. If we believe that Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood for us, and that in that name Jesus, with that name that we are saved, if we believe that, that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God, if we believe that with that name we have everything that pertains to life and godliness, then so shall it be. So you believe in your heart 
the Lord Jesus, you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and then we have eternal life. We enjoy all the benefits together. So I challenge you today. What do you do? I want you to believe. Everything I've said since 11 o'clock today, believe it. Why? Because I base this on the word of God. I didn't tell you it's my opinion. I said it's the word of God. I mentioned where it was. You will get the chance to replay this as many times as you want. You will see that we shared the word of God with you so that you know that everything we're saying is based on the word. Don't be afraid at this time. Don't lose your hope at this time. Don't lose your sanity at this time. Don't think there is no God at this time. Don't go backward on your faith at this time. Don't depart the faith at this time. Be strong at this time. Remain faithful if you're already a Christian. And if you are not yet, believe that Jesus came for you. He preached that message when he was here, and we are preaching it today too. Believe that message. Then confess that you believe that he is also now, you are now saying that he is also your Lord and Savior. And it's not up to me. I'm telling you but that by the power in the name of Jesus that you have just confessed, you become born again like everybody else before you. Praise the Lord. So if you are here right now and you are part of this live stream, I want to pray a prayer with you. But it's more like a declaration and I'm going to make it and as I'm making it, I will pause each time for you to be able to say the same. And when I finish, I want you to know that you are born again that you are born again just like anybody else who is born again. And I want you to go and begin to be the Christian that God has made you to be, that he has ordained for you to be. He said that he doesn't want anyone to perish in 2 Peter 3, 9. He doesn't want you to perish. He doesn't want me to perish. I can tell you, anybody who does not have Jesus Christ, they will perish. And God does not want that. He said, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world? You have become popular. You have, you have so much followership on Instagram. You have so much on, on Facebook. You have so much on all the other social media platforms. You have so much influence. In fact, companies are now paying you as an influencer. What is the point of all that influence if the most important influence, you are not carrying it out? That is who you become. You become the most important influencer the world can have when you give your life to Christ. That is what we're calling you to. Nothing else is bigger than that. Give your life unto him today. Let us say this declaration together. And it's a prayer too. And that includes those of you, you like to rededicate your life. You, 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 when pandemic is over, you are not staying online and saying that is the only way you are doing church. Don't redefine things that don't need to be redefined. Find a local church. If you live in Barcelona, come to KICC Kingdom Harvest. If you, if, you, if you live near any of the KICC chapels and branches all over London and all over United Kingdom and all over the world, go to the one nearest to you. You know, go to any other church that is nearest to you that you feel led to go to. And when you get there, don't look for how the pastor dresses. Don't look for whether his English is better than yours or not. Don't look for how he speaks his language different from yours. Don't look for how the people dress. Don't look for how they, they look like they work, the kind of work you do and collect the kind of salary you collect. Don't look for the wrong things because you will settle in the wrong place. Look for Christ. Look for the word. Have an intention to find God. But I can assure you, if you go with an intention to grow in the house of the Lord, you will flourish in that house that you have decided to stay in, in the name of Jesus. Let us pray together and make that declaration together. Dear Jesus, I am sorry for my sins. And I ask you to forgive me now. I believe that you died for me and that you rose on the third day. 
I confess to you that I'm a sinner and that I need your love and forgiveness. Cleanse my heart, O Lord, with your blood. Come into my life, Jesus Christ. I confess you now as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for my salvation. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for regardless of my sins. You have washed it all away with your precious, blemishless, spotless blood. Father, thank you for saving me. Thank you, I'm born again. Thank you, I belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. I also declare for those who are rededicating, rededic rededicating their life to Christ, anything that is besetting you right now, I release you from it in the name of Jesus. Anything that is causing a distraction, that is causing a blockade, that is responsible for even the reason why you are rededicating your life, we know that you can only be saved once. We cannot call Jesus to come again and die again and rise on the third day again so that you can rededicate your life. But we are dealing with you in faith. We do not want you to go around doubting whether God has accepted you again. He has already accepted you that first time many years ago or some months ago or some weeks ago when you gave your life to him. But for your sake, we encourage you and we say, that life that you are rededicating today, I pray that it will be a life that will glorify God. That everything you do will start with Christ. Every decision you make will start with Christ. Every choice you are making right now, how you want to live your life, how you want to be a minister, how you want to be a preacher, how you want to be a teacher, how you want to serve God, how you want to do business in the world and also business of God. I pray that as you are rededicating your life to Christ, that the fruit of a rededicated life in Christ, that it will be seen in your life and in your choices in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. I really thank God for those of you who have come into this first live stream of KICC Kingdom Harvest. Many of you have supported many houses of God at this time to be a part of what God is doing and what God is saying and is using all of us. In fact, if anybody has watched or listened in to at least one live stream, I can confirm that even if you have the ability to listen to 50, you will find that God has spoken through his servants in so many different ways. But it's all the word of God. And it is for us to go away from these sessions and go and be the Christian that God wants us to be. There is somebody around you in your neighborhood. There's somebody in your directory on that your phone that is called a smartphone. You are smarter than that phone. Dig into that directory. Call somebody. Encourage them. Pray with them. Ask them a question. People that you've never called before that are in your directory, and you know they are over sixty. They are over. Uh, they are. They are. They are. They are. They are uh, in self isolation, or they are vulnerable at this time. Call them up. Encourage them. You'll be surprised. Many people don't need the food. They don't need the money. It's not everybody that needs food and money alone. Some people, what they need is things that address the mind, the spirit, and that is what we bring. Because when you have that, you have the food, you have the drink. The meat and drink we talk about is not the one the world talks about. It's the one to do with the kingdom of God. So I encourage you to go out there and do likewise. I thank God for those of you who are members of KICC Kingdom Harvest who have also been part of this live stream. I, I see a good number. And I, I know that some people will, will take you through wonderful uh, social media 101 so you can join in this at this time, amen? So people have different reasons why they are not here at this time, but that's all, uh, it's all good. Yeah, many people are not used to this kind of uh, um, 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 situation. So we thank God for the lives of everyone, but we thank God especially for those who have not been able to fellowship with us in KSC Kingdom Harvest all these years, and you are still, you know, in the humility of, of our own surroundings and what we can do or not do at this time, you are here with us to have fellowship with us. I pray that God will bless you, and I pray that everything that God has ordained for you, by you being part of this session, that God will do them in your life in the name of Jesus.
You will not have joined this session in vain. You will finish this session with us and you'll be more blessed in the name of Jesus. I thank God for your life. I encourage every one of us, let us go and serve God. Let us go and do Christ. Let people see Christ through us. And let the grace and peace of that passes all human understanding. Let it garrison your heart and your mind in the mighty name of Jesus. God loves you. I love you too. We are Chaos is the Kingdom Marriage. My name is Toki Ademoyero. Please come to our page regularly. You can see that we, we always proclaim the gospel over the years. Go to our website, kicckingdomharvest.org.uk. We also have a message there to do with coronavirus at the beginning there on the whole page. Please just be a part of what we're doing from our own humble beginnings. As long as we are preaching Christ, that is what matters. And I know that that is what matters to you as well. So we thank God for your life. We, we glorify God concerning you. We celebrate Christ concerning you. And I pray that the word of the Lord, as you continue to, to, to desire it, that it will cause you to grow in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you are blessed today. The message is remaining faithful in these times. Remain faithful, my brother, my sister. Let us remain faithful. Be encouraged in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Some of you, um, and possibly all of you, will like at this time to give an offering unto the Lord, because even though we are online, we have still come to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and we are used to not coming to the King of Kings empty-handed. I want you to come with a heart of thanksgiving. I want you to come with a heart of, of trust in God, a heart of celebration, a heart of knowing that this is God himself. I want you to sow a seed unto God that shows that you've come to worship God and God alone. In chaos is a kingdom of us, you can still give. There's a donate button that you will see on our page right after you scroll on the home page and you see 2020, the year of shining. Not long after that, you will see a post where we put two links that you can click on so that you can use PayPal to give or you can use your own card to give. The on-screen instruction is um, very straightforward. I will give you about two minutes, three minutes to be able to do that. And then I will pray in about three minutes over the seed that you've sown in the name of Jesus. But while you're doing that, more information, please, there is a field within that when you click to give and you've entered the amount you want to give, please watch out for the amount so you give in pounds and pence as you want to give, whether it's dollars and cents, whatever comes up on your screen, do that. But there is a box right under that that allows you to enter some optional text. I really would like to plead with those of you who are already registered givers of KICC Kingdom Harvest. You have a giving number, we mean. So if you have a giving number that starts with KH, please feel free to quote that within that optional text so that our finance team will know uh, that we can use that record to, to also um, be blessed with another extra 20% of your donation from the government uh, because we are a house of God. Praise the Lord. So please enter your giving number in that optional text. If you are giving a tithe, you can enter that word tithe. If you are giving tithe and offering, enter the tithe and the amount and offering, the amount in that same optional text. Please do so. Um, and then I will pray in the next few seconds. I want to believe that everybody has done that. I know with many of you, it is very straightforward, but I always have to talk based on those who may not be used to this kind of things um, at all, so, so that they are not struggling. So I believe everybody by now has been able to do that. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come to you today and will present our sacrifice of praise. Father, we pray, O oh Lord, that you accept this seed that we have sown as a token of our appreciation of who you are in our life, the things you have done, the things you are yet to do, and the things that you are, that you are, that you are doing. Father, we also pray at this time, in the name of Jesus, that you bless everyone as they continue to give to promote the works of the kingdom. 
Father, I pray that blessings from heaven above, it will come back unto them in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. In the name of Jesus. Father, as they are sown, O Lord, let it be acceptable unto you. Let it be used for great works. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you for blessing your people. Thank you for blessing the offering. Thank you for the opportunity to sow into your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. At this time, I want to finish off this session by spending a few times that I want you to join me in. So even though I'm praying here, I want to, I want to encourage you to pray those prayers with me as well. And then we will then end the session. And I want us to pray concerning this pandemic, the coronavirus pandemic. It is a reality in the lives of people right now. But there is a reality that is deeper and richer and comforting that you and I can reach into and use to bless the people, including ourselves at this time. So I want us to lift up our voice right now. And I want you to begin to pray. The first prayer point is, Father, let there be a stoppage of this virus. Let the infection, let it stop. Let the deaths, let it stop. Let every account of death, every report of death, every report of ill health, every report of infection, let it stop by the power in the name of Jesus. We call upon your name. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Father in heaven, we call upon your name today. You said where two or three are gathered together in your name, you are there in their midst. We know you are here. You've also told us in this house, based on your word in Second Chronicles chapter 7, you said that your ears will be attained unto every prayer that we say in this place. Father, we join up with every Christian all over the world because spiritually together, everyone will achieve more. We join up with them and we pray, O oh Lord, that you will stop, O oh Lord, the flow of this virus. You will stop the spread of this virus by the power in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, stop the flow of the virus, O oh Lord. Stop the flow of the virus, O oh Lord. Where there is death, O oh Lord, we pray, O oh Lord, send comfort, send strength to those families, to those individuals, to those people. Some are young, some are old, some did not prepare for this. Some were not, it was even them. It, it, it was just maybe other situations that they found themselves through other people's own carelessness that may have brought it. But Father, they are not no more here with us. We do not want this to continue. As Christians, we join up, O oh Lord, with other Christians all over the world, and we shout unto you, we cry unto you, with a voice of unity, O oh Lord, where you command the blessing and life forevermore. And we pray, Lord, answer our cry right now, O oh Lord. Stop the virus, stop the infection, stop the flow, stop the death, O oh Lord, as a result of the pandemic. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Another prayer I'd like, to, like us to pray is based on Second Chronicles uh, uh, chapter, chapter 12, uh, verse 7. Uh, and it says, I mean, yes, Second Chronicles chapter 12. I'm trying to be sure I'm quoting the right scripture. Second Chronicles chapter 12, I think it is verse 7. And it says, where it says that, uh, that we should all, if everyone can call on the name of Jesus and turn from their wicked ways and, and, and pray and ask for forgiveness. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses from verse 12. 12 thereabout if everyone will call upon the name of jesus if everyone will turn from their wicked ways if everyone will turn from their wicked ways and ask for forgiveness of their sins god said he will forgive us our sins he said he will hear us from heaven and he said he will heal our land i pray in the name of jesus i want us to pray this prayer Father, every sin that we have committed, especially in the United Kingdom, to dishonor you, to disrespect you, to disobey you, O oh Lord, that may cause this pandemic, pandemic, Father, forgive us, forgive us, forgive us. We pray, O oh Lord, government decisions, leaders' decisions, leaders' choices, things that have been, choices that have been made by citizens that are offensive to you, 
that are causing this, if they are the ones causing this pandemic, Father, any sin that we have committed, O oh Lord, forgive us, forgive us, O oh Lord, forgive us, O oh Lord, by the blood of the Lamb, O oh Lord, wash us clean, O oh Lord. You said if we confess, confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I, oh, Father, we pray, O oh Lord, forgive us our sins, O oh Lord. Cleanse us, especially the United Kingdom, and all over the world. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We bring every nation under the banner of Christ. And we pray, O oh Lord, oh, for forgiveness. We ask for mercy. We ask for mercy. We ask for mercy. It doesn't matter what scientists we have. It doesn't matter what experts we have. We know that only you, Lord, can stop this pandemic. Oh, Father. Father, forgive us. Father, forgive us. Forgive all our sins. Heal the land, O oh Lord. 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 Heal the land by the power in the name of Jesus. Heal this land, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to pray two more prayer points before we close. The first one out of the last two is we're going to pray for wisdom. Wisdom for the leaders, our local leaders, our national leaders. There are some leaders in nations right now who have not even given any, any speech to anybody in their country. But we are depending on God. There are some places where they have given speech in their country. But yet, we are depending on God. We're going to pray today that as, as, we are, uh, as these leaders are coming out and communicating with us and making decisions and giving us the next round of instructions, we know that they are listening to some advices. Let us pray that God will give these leaders, local leaders, national leaders, he will give them hearing ears to hear good advice and that their ears will be deaf to demonic advice. Again, I want you to pray that all our local leaders and national leaders at this time where every leader obviously is going to have to be listening to some experts or some scientists or some advisors, let us pray that their ears will be open to hear the good advice that is coming from heaven and that their ears will be deaf to every demonic advice that any, any agent of Satan may be bringing to them. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for wisdom, wisdom and strength in every leader, local leader, national leader, all over the world, all in United Kingdom, all in Barcelona, all in Essex. Oh Lord, we pray for all our leaders. We pray for all of them, all leaders, community leaders, cabinet leaders in the council, uh, all the county council, council uh, leaders, all the councillors, all the MPs, every form of leader, every local and regional leader, national leader, we commit them unto you, Lord. Grant them wisdom. Grant them strength, O oh Lord. Give them, O oh Lord, the assertiveness, O oh Lord, to make the right decisions, to know how to say no, and give them the ears that are deaf to demonic advice and the ears that are open, oh, by your grace, by your mercy, open to hear good advice. Good advice, because every decision they make is going to affect thousands, millions of people. Many people will obey them, do what they say, including even those of us who are of you. So therefore, Father, we pray, O oh Lord, that you will use our leaders to hear your word, to hear your word, to do that which is what you want them to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, this is our prayer. Father, this is our prayer. Father, this is our prayer, O oh Lord. We pray for them, for our leaders, in Jesus' name. And the last prayer point, I want you to pray that God will banish every spirit of fear that is hovering over the United Kingdom and over nations of the world right now in the name of Jesus. God has not sent that spirit, I can assure you, and you and I know, and that's why you are joining me up, joining up with me in that prayer. Let us pray against the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear is not coming from God. Let us banish it right now in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Heavenly Father, we lift up our voice this afternoon, oh, and we declare war against the spirit of fear. Every spirit of fear that is trying to penetrate every heart, every mind in this country and other countries of the world, trying to penetrate homes, trying to penetrate places, trying to penetrate minds, trying to penetrate areas of peace 
and order and fear wants to come and mess it all up. Father, right now, we, 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 we pray unto you and we ask, O oh Lord, that by the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the Spirit of our Lord, that every spirit of fear is banished. We know that it does not come from you and therefore we reject it. We reject every bad news. We reject every fake news. We reject every weak news. We reject every instruction that is carrying fear in the mighty name of Jesus. All the people who are hearing all these instructions will pray that fear will not be in their mind. We deliver them from the bondage of fear in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We thank you. We honor you. We adore you. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. We glorify your name, O oh Lord. Take all the glory. Take all the praise, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Praise his holy name. Let us say the grace of the Lord together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, the Lord will keep us. He will be with us. He will guide us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please remember to join us on Tuesday for prayer. Just one hour on Tuesday for prayer from 7.30 p.m. Join us for prayers. It's another live stream. And again, until the period of this uh, Suspension is over. We're going to be meeting on Sundays also like this from 11 a.m. I hope you are blessed today. It is our first time ever doing live stream. So we thank God. God bless you. Remain blessed. Remain strong. Remain bold. For God is with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bye for now.